The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, this won't be a popular video. I, I cannot, I mean, the, the stuff that's downvoted, by the way, the stuff that's downvoted, it gets downvoted to like 94% likes as opposed to 98% likes. So it's, 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 you know, I, I can take out my tiny violin here with downvotes, but uh, it, it, <laughs> I've, I've taken to, I don't, I, I don't look at the ratings because uh, if you've used uh, YouTube Studio, um, you know, and it's in a kind of normal size browser window, I'm not one of those expand to fill the entire screen kind of people. I, I find that just just weird and obnoxious, and it's a painful way. It reminds me of of how kind of old uh, you know Windows 3.1 and stuff like that would work, where the entire thing filled the screen. I like floating windows all over the place that I could click through. Um, anyway, if you used YouTube Studio, you'll know that the uh, ratings for your video are all the way on the right. So typically, I don't see them as part of a normal day. I'm, I'm uploading stuff, I'm adding the thing. If I want to go see that, I have to actually go scroll to the right. And it's not a big deal, but it is enough of a deal for me because I'm a video machine here. Um, and so I just don't normally see it. But I have taken to, like, when I know I'm posted something that is going to, uh, you know, irk, then I'm like, ah, I wonder how bad it is. And I go look. And I think, oh, okay. It's 90. It's 96. It's 98. Oh, well. Anyway, um, little, little micro changes. Um, hopefully that's because the majority of people, despite kind of uh, a couple wonky uh, individuals, the majority of people um, uh, say, hey, that's his opinion. He's, he's at least given us a reason for it. It's not some irrational, just Vince or bullshittery. It's uh, there's there's logic that he's at least attempting to put out there. And so I, I totally disagree with that opinion. But at least, you know, he gave us the math of how he's uh, how he thinks to it. And that's that's. You know, what more can anyone ask for, right? You know, we shouldn't all agree on things. I, I think it's uh, one of the worst aspects of the last five years or so is this notion that that everybody, that like people need to agree on the same thing. It's uh, it's that toxic, uh, um, you know, you're either with us or you're a Nazi. It's like, yikes. Um, that there's, you either have one very narrow perspective and way of looking at things or, you know, you do not get to come over for Thanksgiving. We will never see Grandpa again. Fuck that guy. He's old. Like, it, that is such a, that, that's such an absolutely bizarre way of thinking. Um, and it, it, you know, I, it just, that, that kind of, and, and you hear it, quite frankly, when people do the, oh, that's a fence sitter kind of position. Well, that the fence sitter is a, is a, you know, shorthand for saying, you know, you're not these two polarizing points of view that that exists so you so therefore you your, your opinion is invalid you're just a wishy-washy kind of loser in the middle and everything else well nobody operates that way including by the way the people who are quote unquote on on one aggressive or like on one far inside or the other they also have differences of opinion everyone does people like their steak medium rare some people are wrong and like it well done you know it, it's it, it there's a lot of different opinions on everything in life the car you drive what you do for hobbies, what you watch on TV. Can you imagine a, a completely awful world where everybody just conformed to the same shit? That's terrible. You know, that's, that's, that's the nightmare. Whatever the shit is, anything. By the way, if everyone conformed to me, meaning I, you know, all the Arby's were burned down. You know, people go to the airport and they, they hustle and they walk through that shit. They do not stand on the human conveyor belt like a big old l lump you know, they actually moved. I'm um, trying to think of all the other things I would destroy. I'll be honest, I'd probably take out baseball. I know it's an American sport and all the rest, but good Christ, it's, I mean, you know what? I would do this. In the future, baseball would be played this way. You would get to keep the bat. So once you hit the ball, you hold on to that bat and you could use it any way you see fit. That's, that's how you improve that game. Anyway, or more, more alcohol. I mean, let's be honest. Going to a baseball game is going to a bar. That's why you do it. That's the purpose of it anyway. So as you probably guessed from the title of the video and the thumbnail, uh, talking about kind of the death of masculinity, which is a big topic right now. And I, it, what's funny is kind of this, this topic tends to ignore um, kind of two obvious truths, I think, when it comes out. So for the people who say, no, no, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But they ignore the fact that there, there are people out there who are outwardly stating that they're trying to get rid of, eliminate, make bad, 
and a quote unquote hyper masculinity. You know, it's it's not like you know people are guessing all the time. Uh, people are saying that out loud, uh, and and not you know just fringe nuts, but you do see this. And you know, a, a better way to kind of you know show it is this little uh, adventure in Target. No, not the recent one, but but several years ago, when Target had the toy section, they had the boys and the girls sign. And then uh, Target took those down and just said toys. And then that got a bit of a backlash. So they put them back up, and then very quietly, they took them back down again. I think that the boys and the girls stuff is, no longer exists there as, as labels. And, you know, from a purely kind of sanity perspective, makes sense just toys you don't have when you go to the movies you don't get like guy movies chick movies although in fairness if they did separate the films out that way it probably you know if people there's an association with the, what those things are but generally everybody walking into the toy section can go well here's dolls over here gonna trend toward girls you know here's action figures over here gonna trend toward boys like who's buying the wwe action figures bunch of girls a eh, few i'm sure not many. Good trend toward boys. And everybody knows this. So hanging up a sign like with an arrow, like boys, boys buy this. I, you know, I, I think it 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 doesn't that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't need the sign. We all know what's going on. Um, you know, being a retailer in a comic shop for a long period of time, um, I think the uh, <laughs> you you quickly come to realize, and and maybe this is a retailer mindset in general where you're not part of a corporation. I mean, you don't have a, like a, you're not, wa- you're not working at Walmart where, you know, you need to behave a certain way, but the money's going to Walmart, right? You, whether you have a, an amazing day or kind of an average day on a personal level, probably doesn't really matter financially to you. So you're going to get the same money. But if you're an individual shop owner, or retailer, you quickly learn the one cardinal rule, which is you sell that shit to whoever wants it. So, I've seen retailers. I, I would, you know, would buddy up with a guy in in Seattle um, who uh, was down on what third? Uh, the guy anyway, ran Xanadu, and uh, he would every now and then like you know make comments like that comic's not for you, you know. And it was always kind of crazy. I I always joke about him like if they had money, that comic was for them. Like it doesn't matter, you know. If if a girl wants to come in and buy the uh, Lobo paramilitary Christmas special, you fucking sell that book. You sell a book right now. You don't sit there and go, wow, honey, that's a guy's book. You're going to need to come over here to, I don't know, these old back issues of Millie the Model. You're going to have to you have to do that. That would be ridiculous. Um, anytime you've kind of, in comics, you know, when you overtly kind of say who the comic is for, tends to bomb whether it's for you know men or women or whether it's for uh, LGBTQ audiences or, or not. In fairness, there's not a lot of comic books out there, you know, that the big tour producer are like, this book is for straight people. They don't, they don't do that. They don't kind of do that advertising campaign, believe it or not. Uh, but, you know, whenever they go too much and we saw it with the voices comics to some extent, we saw it in the, uh, was it represent the DC books? Um, it, it's a bad idea. If you, you, you got to come out there and be like, this is a comic. It's got a story in it. If you come out there like this comic is for, you know, the asexual audience, the, uh, you know, the customers punish you for that. Not because they're obnoxious. Like we're, we, you know, we hate any kind of labels, but because, you know, that that's a relatively small percentage of population to label it like that. People are like, well, that I'm not, the, I'm not that body. I'm not that. So I guess this isn't for me. And they opt out. And so the same thing happens if you if you have a comic book and you say this comic book for boys, well, that's a terrible idea, because if you were to get you know girl customers, you've just told them go away. You know the comic book the story will sort itself out. It will not people will naturally gravitate to their interests. You don't need to you don't need to label it. So I find that all very silly. Um, on the other hand, you know the other part to it. Not on the other hand, because it's not really another hand. It's a, it's a second point. It's not a counterpoint. Um, there's a lot of stuff that just ages out. So this is going to be an unpopular opinion, what I'm about to say. Uh, but it's worth considering. Okay, so right now we got the new Indiana Jones movie coming out. And we've had some other movies come out where somebody, 
And it's usually some douchebag. And you know what's funny is it never starts from, you know, the, uh, you know, we've got to protect masculinity side. It always starts on the other side. Kind of the, the, the toxic nut job on, on, on one end who's like, this movie firmly gives the finger to the toxic male line of thinking and people. It's like the Mary Sue. If you go read those articles, there's a almost kind of, uh, you know, gleeful delight that the writers will write talking about how this movie says, fuck you, man. I'm not sure the movie does that. The majority of the time, the movie isn't doing that. The movie is, uh, in a lot of movies lately, you know, for people to say, oh, this movie has woke dialogue in it. In many cases, if you if you watch the entire movie, the movie is not filled with woke dialogue. The movie just has this like potpourri of shit in it where it feels like the filmmaker, or the writers just like, ah, hell, I got to just throw every I've got to throw everything in. I'm going to try and make everybody happy. I'm mean, like, here's a here's something about how men suck. And here's something about uh, I, just they just throw in like it's a grab bag of dialogue. It's almost nonsensical. It feels like somebody is trying to, like, we got to appeal to all the Twitter on- audiences simultaneously. So here's just, they're just going to pour in shit. Doesn't match the dialogue, doesn't match the movie, anything. But I said people are going to disagree with what I'm about to say, and I don't, I don't think I've hit it yet. The thing I think people are going to disagree with is a lot of the stuff is less, let's diminish or masculinity. The stuff is more along the lines of, that's aged poorly. And Indiana Jones is a good example of that. Now, the idea in Hollywood, which, for the record, I disagree with, but the idea in Hollywood is, hey, a lot of those Indiana Jones movies, the kind of the, you know, gruff outlaw kind of guy with his personality and, and all that kind of stuff, um, that doesn't work in 2023. That ages out. So, therefore, we need to make changes because it doesn't match current audiences who would never go for some of that stuff. I said I didn't agree with it because, you know, people still watch Indiana Jones films and uh, they enjoy them, you know, still popular. You know, they have aged. When I say they aged poorly, it's just some of the graphics. Say, I remember as a kid watching Raiders of the Lost Ark and the end scene where people's faces melted off is like, holy shit, as a kid, I'm like, oh, goddamn, you know, some this some uh, pretty horrific shit going on. And I watched that the other day. It's like, oh, my God, this is the worst CGI. I mean, I just burst out laughing. And how crappy it was. You know? And I was watching it with my kids. I'm showing them Raiders of the Lost Ark for the first time. And my kids are like, they're, they're laughing too. They're like, what, what the, what, what's going on there? You know, it, does, it, it looks absurd. Like, they've seen bigger violence than that. Uh, it's kind of like uh, a lot of the movies we watched as kids. They look, they look ludicrous now. You know? I, I was uh, all excited to show the kids the... Uh, never-ending story because I want them to see that horse die and it's like oh it's got time to traumatize the kids and it didn't uh it didn't do that like because it all it looked pretty absurd it wasn't it wasn't good in terms of the graphics now in your memory it's still pretty powerful but if you actually go back and watch it it's not great you know from a from a design perspective gremlins is another one classic movie love that movie it doesn't it (laughs) a lot of that stuff looks pretty campy just you know but but when you watched it when you were a kid your memory is different you know you were you were acclimated to what they were doing at the time indiana jones the other bit and uh you know i was talking with somebody about it it uh it's funny because you know indy is a pedophile in that movie they they i mean it's gonna irritate many of you but they they do kind of say that because it's a if you listen to dialogue carefully I, you're inferring, by the way. I'm I'm being a little tongue in cheek. Uh, that's that's probably not fair in today's day and age. But you would at least say Indy was a groomer of some kind because he's like, "You got along with my dad," says Marion, you know. And then they they clearly did something. It's like, you know, I was in love. I was a child, and you know, from more of the dialogue, you get the inference that this was she was not old enough to drive, or about that age <laughs> when. When they were, whatever they were doing. But if she was in love, I it broke her heart. I don't know. It's, again, it's, a, it's the 80s, so who knows, you know, a romance. You know, are they talking they had, you know, kind of wild sex? Or did they just, like, he give her a little kiss? Or was he kind of love bombing her? You know, well, I don't know. What what was going on? 
But if you listen to that, it, if you take your mind down a certain path, it's it's weird. Anyway, the, the current Indiana Jones movie, I'm sure, is going to be absolute shit. And I say that as a safe bet, because the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was also, you know, complete shit. And maybe this will be better than that. Maybe it'll be worse. I, I don't know. But I, do you have any expectations this is going to be a good movie? I, I don't. And the main reason is they're, they're trying to squeeze blood from a stone that is not, it doesn't need to be squeezed. Like Indiana Jones, as a character, it's a good set of movies. But if you're doing live action, these things end. Characters get too old, the moment's over. And you have to be willing to let that go. And, and with this, it feels like, and I think if we were living in a different time, even 10 years ago, most of us would be looking at this and going, they don't need to make a sequel. It's, you know, he, he's old now. I mean, it's, it's like they, they can just, just let it go. Like, it's, it's past its date. But because it's 2023, there's a culture war of it. Now's the chance to redeem Indiana Jones's toxic masculinity by introducing a younger, smarter, more capable, you know, Mary Sue type character that can. Yeah, I'm sure that is what's I'm sure that's the plot. Because, uh, of course, of course it is. But the war on masculinity is is almost more of a it's almost a war on time. And that's that's what I'd like you to kind of just to leave you with or have you think about a little bit is a, is a lot of this stuff. I don't believe it's a bunch of wah ha 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 kind of villains sitting around a table twirling their mustache and going, let's get rid of all the men. We're making everybody gay today. That's what we're going to do. It's more of a bunch of people sitting around a table going, I'm embarrassed of the past. The past is embarrassing. And can you believe all these? They weren't even progressive. And these, these, these characters didn't even talk about the environment. Hell, did you notice in Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, and they're flying around that uh, there's all this smog emission from all these cars? You know, did you notice how how they didn't even seem to care? Like when they talked about the world being destroyed, they didn't even mention that the polar ice caps melting were a problem. And, and people have skipped over noticing the other thing, which is like, how the fuck did Indiana Jones hang on to a submarine for what has to be like 2,000 miles through the water? He'd be dead. He would not make that journey. Did the submarine just fly, float along at the surface the entire time? It didn't go underwater? Like, how'd that happen? Anyway, we've gone from a place of uh, basically debating obvious plot holes to debating, uh, you know, if it like these movies are embarrassing because they're old. But in a normal world, you would just not make the movie. You would say, well, this is an older movie. It's aged out. We don't, we don't need to make more because it doesn't make sense. Let's not make more. But Hollywood, in their classic kind of have their cake and eat it too, is doing the, well, these old films are embarrassing. We need to contemporize them. We need to, we need to bring them up to speed. We need to make them great again. Um, and we, but, but we need to make them. Because uh, that brand has value. So we're just going to kind of continue to turn the crank and make make money off this shit. And uh, because there's there's a couple million dollars we can scrape out. It's a hell of a lot easier doing this to an existing brand and uh, trying to quote unquote fix the past versus, you know, come up with something new. Because yeah, the dirty secret in all this is coming up with something new is hard. And if you're if you make movies or make comics or make books, whatever you're doing, if you're making it through a kind of a grab bag of random topics, you're going to lose. That's not how art is created. You actually have to have a plot, a story and a plan. And you have to, you know, you, you actually have to make art. And if you are trying to just grab a bunch of Twitter statements and mush them together, try and make some kind of movie. Well, you know, I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll give you this, too. Watch one of these, you know, whatever, movie that, that was labeled as woke, okay? And notice that even watching this movie, there's stuff, there's statements that appeal to your quote-unquote side as well. It's not all just woke. It has, it has the other side too. This, this movie or comic, whatever it is, has no soul. That's the problem. There, there's no... There's no plot to it. It's, it's just trying to commercially appeal to an audience like a shotgun to the face. And people pull out the wokes up. They, look, people are uh, talking about how great Super Mario Bros. the movie is. There's a different timeline where, you know, people could have got it going of like, you got Girl Boss Peach. 
who's over there who doesn't need to trade. She's just naturally better at everything than Mario, and Mario trains all day, all night. Poor Chris Pratt's character. And Peach just gets it on the first time because, fuck, she's amazing. She is total girl boss. And then we get to the end of the movie, she kind of saves herself because she didn't need no toxic dinosaur trying to marry her, and she didn't need no plumber man either. But we didn't get those that narrative because people were, you know, it, it just kind of different timeline, different, different day of the week. And so instead, it fell the other direction. Instead, it was like, this is how you do a movie. This is good nostalgia. And it, you know, it, it could have gone either way because a lot of these movies, and by the way, I watched Mario with my kids. They, they found it fine. You know, it was entertaining. And that's why it worked. Because at the end of the day, even though it had a lot of that uh, potpourri of uh, bullshit from Twitter, even though it had kind of a bunch of different perspectives being represented, they did tie it together with a good story or, you know, at least some good entertaining package, and it worked. And that's, that, that's it. You know, contrast that with that He-Man uh, series that uh, Kevin Smith did, and it's like, well, the problem with that is that it was advertised as He-Man. It turned out not really to be about He-Man. He-Man actually had, you know, barely any appearance in the majority of the series, and so... It, it felt like a bait and switch. And so once you start feeling that way, once it's not entertaining, and that's that's the, the mode you're in, very quickly, you start noticing all the other stuff. Suddenly, you're, you, you know, it, 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 doesn't, it falls apart. That's, I, to me, I think this, uh, this war against masculinity, it's a fun thing. Um, it, it's very pithy. It's a good title on YouTube. It gets people's attention. War on men. I better click on that. That's, that's you know, I understand I understand why people go there. Um, but in many cases, I think the answer is a lot more complicated than that. It's, it's a war against time. It's a war, it's a war against trying to kind of say whatever happened in the past is embarrassing. We need to redo it and re-edit and refix. And a lot of the movies in the past were male driven in a lot of cases. And so it's like, well, we have to fix this. We have to erase it. Of course, the correct answer is, just come up with something new. Stop trying to, to dig to the same property. The properties that happened in the past were, were loved and liked for a reason. You got to keep them the way they are. If you want to do something contemporary for our time, you have to do something new. It doesn't work to take something from the past that has an established audience that people know for you know, a specific reason, a storyline that works for it, and then bring it into the future change the shit out of it, but still expect people to pay you. That doesn't work. You got to leave the things in the past. If you want to, if you, frankly, if you want to redo Indiana Jones, then you're going to almost have to do a shot for shot remake with a younger actor. Have it have the same tone, do the same shit. That's the only way you could do it and have it work. You know, the, the past is static. These, these things existed for a reason. It's why so much of the war against comic books Look, the X-Men, the Avengers, Batman, all these other things, they have a, a purpose a, and a tone. They are what they are. Doesn't mean they can never change. Of course, you can have the character go through new experiences and everything else, but if you try and radically contemporize it for 2023, it falls apart. Because of course it was. Because it, you're not starting with a blank piece of paper. You're starting with a paper that's pretty full. You need to evolve the adventures. You can't just change the characters. And, and not expect it to go poorly. Anyway, my perspectives. Feel free to disagree. I know many of you will. And thanks for listening.